Hey everybody, Brian Garcia, Meteorologist, National Weather Service, San Francisco Bay Area, Monterey Bay Regions. Want to give you a brief update in terms of what we're expecting tonight. This here is the surface analysis chart put out by the Ocean Prediction Center. And out here over on the right, we're looking at this guy out over here. This little area of low pressure is going to come tracking right up the west coast here out along the right side of this image. If we look at it in satellite form, here it is. You can see this area of low pressure really starting to spin there, surrounded by some green flashies. That is actually satellite detected lightning data. So this area of low pressure is going to slide right up the coast towards Cape Blanco there in southwest Oregon. And let's take a look at what's going on right now. Up in North Bay, we're already seeing winds eclipsing 25 knots or 25 miles per hour in a lot of the areas. And if we slide southward, we'll see winds doing the same thing, even down here in Big Sur, upwards of 54 miles per hour. It looks like we uh, peaked out there at 56 so far, but that's gonna be coming up even more. If we take a look at some models, just to give you an idea, this is just one model. And I just wanna give you an idea what the winds might look like overnight. So if we get to three, four, five, six p.m. tonight, you can see those wind gusts spreading, and that red zone is in the 50 mile per hour range. And that's just gonna increase until we get to about uh, midnight, 1 a.m. And squeeze them right up against the coast and this is a coarse model so these winds can filter in across land too so we can see wind gusts potentially in the 40 50 maybe even 60 mile per hour range as we go through the night that will kick through by tomorrow morning and we should have a uh, i'm gonna say a calm ish morning in terms of winds and then we're gonna start to see the winds ramp up again christmas eve evening and into the nighttime as the next system rolls in and you can see here those reds reappear by the time we get into midnight 1 a.m on christmas day morning so those early hours of christmas day morning could be relatively breezy but wind's not the only story although it is the biggest story uh rain is a, a distinct possibility still and we'll have some high intensity rain roll through just just ahead of those winds so that rain's going to come in bringing those winds and we'll see a lot of wind actually the wind will precede the rain so we'll see that rain come in you'll have the highest wind right along that rain band and it's going to be some high intensity rain bands as well so we'll see how much piles up but according to this model you'll see that the rain piles up up north and down south as we get into the 24th and we're kind of left blank here but that doesn't mean we don't have some rain impacts as well. But like I said, wind is the big issue here, and that's gonna be the main story of this, of this system. As a matter of fact, the Storm Prediction Center out there in Norman, Oklahoma, has us highlighted for a uh, general thunder line, then a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms there. And as we go forward in day two outlook, so this is 4 a.m. Wednesday, the 24th through 4 a.m. Uh, Thursday, the 25th, you can see that marginal risk remains over much of the Bay Area. If we hover over tornado up here, we have a 2% chance of seeing tornadoes, 5% chance of seeing some damaging winds. So that's a big deal. And if I pull this up, let's see here, we can take a look at uh, all of the uh, advisories and warnings that we have out right now. You can see this map, very colorful. We have wind advisories for the vast majority of our area and then high wind warning for the coastal areas and the coastal mountains, storm warnings out over the coastal waters, um, and gale warnings over the San Francisco Bay waters. So with flash flooding being a possibility, um, we also have severe thunderstorms being a possibility and tornadoes being a possibility. We can use wireless emergency alert to trigger off your phone in the middle of the night because it's gonna happen in the middle of the night, of course. So in other words, if you're sleeping and we see a severe thunderstorm or tornado heading your way, or we even see some flash flooding potential, we will issue a warning. And depending upon the severity of those warnings, it will or will not trigger a wireless emergency alert. So for thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms, only our destructive tag, so 80, 80 miles per hour or greater is gonna trigger wireless emergency alert. We could actually see that tonight. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. For flash flood warnings, anything that's on the considerable level of damage threat, that's when it's going to trigger a wireless emergency alert. So just be ready. Have your phone nearby. Make sure that you have some protective actions that you can take in a moment's notice if you get a wireless emergency alert over your phone. Please, please, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other and be good to one another. See everybody. Bye.